Hi, welcome to today's Parents Workshop May Edition. My name is Kelvin, co-founder of Speech Academy Asia. In today's Parents Workshop, I'll be touching on three important topics. Number one, I'll be teaching you the exact curriculum taught to your child in June. This will allow you to be able to reinforce the learnings at home for your child so that they can improve faster. Number two, this workshop is our goodwill to provide you with the latest knowledge and scientific research to help you improve personally in your own life and career together with your child. And finally, number three, to update you on the latest developments in Speech Academy Asia. So are you all excited? How come nobody is responding? Just because I'm not here physically doesn't mean my spirit is not here with you guys. Let's do this one more time. Are you all excited? Yeah. Ah, much better. My spirit feels better already. Before I begin, I'd like to let you know about my background of how I came about to found this school. Can I have a show of hands? How many of you already know about my background? So few hands. You all sign up without knowing the founder's background? Ayo! Some of you may have read it from our brochure. I used to work as a professional contract artist with a local music company where I was acting and singing on stage. That was when I was in my early 20s after I came back from my business degree studies in Australia. What catapulted me to do this was because when I was young, I was an extroverted child, always talkative, always seeking attention, very cute and adorable too. But I always feared the stage. So my father forced me to join all the storytelling competitions in school. I was highly terrified, but my father was even more terrifying, so no choice. I won consecutive first places, silver and bronze medals, because I hated to lose space, and I practiced like crazy. Kiasu is good, but Kiasu is even better, right? That's the Singapore mentality. This stage exposure transformed the fearful part of me to be confident on stage and to treat the stage as my home. That's why I became a performer. Here is a TV commercial of me when I was in my early 20s. Don't laugh so much, okay guys? Here goes. Hey, your if I'm good at getting attention one to one, why not do one to many or even hundreds and thousands? More efficient and can save time. As they say, time is money. So everyone please stay wealthy. After I get older, I went to work for American Express Bank and then went on to work in an event managing company and then got poached to join Kingsman, a public listed exhibition company. I decided to join the sales team because I could speak. But boy, I was wrong. For two years, I couldn't deliver the sales quota and was scolded left, right by my boss every day. I still remembered when I was already late for a meeting and driving down on the expressway when my boss called me and asked me to come back to office to settle a problem. I told my boss I was already late for the meeting. Can I come back after the meeting? My boss said no. Come back now. I told my boss I was on the expressway and she still expects me to come back right away. I've got to take the immediate exit and turn back to the office. And once I'm back in the office, I was practically being scolded for hours. After I left Kingsman, I was demoralized. But I knew that I had so much more. 
So I spent many months just soul searching and refining on my sales techniques. I asked people who were good in sales, charisma, and speech to mentor me. I met up with them to observe them, ask them on their philosophies. I rebuilt myself to a new upgraded version, like Windows 8.1. And finally, I found the key to unlocking charisma, sales, and influencing skills. I then went with my new skills to SPH, Singapore Press Holdings, in the events division. Back then, it was a new department, and I was in charge of the sales of the kids' exhibition booth space. As the industry was new, very few enrichment companies did road shows and was unheard of in their industry. Through my new found sales skills, I ploughed the industry with laser focus and managed to convince all the biggest enrichment companies to join the first kids' exhibition in Suntech called the Kids Academy. Since then, the entire industry grew to rely heavily on exhibitions. And every holiday period, you see lots of children enrichment exhibitions. Because of my success in building up Singapore Press Holdings Education Arm, I was promoted to lead the entire education team. The best part was that most enrichment company that I sold booths to wanted to poach me to join them. Modern Montessori International, MMI, boss's son, Sanjay Chandru, asked me to hate his sales team. Ken Rich, KRTC boss, Dennis, asked me to join him as a CEO. My aged boss, Alan Eat, asked me to hate one of his departments. Even Power Enrichment Training Center boss, Lucas, asked me to be a partner. And in the end, I decided to join Lucas to create Speech Academy Asia as equal partners. The reason is because his mission is aligned to what I feel is the most important for Singapore's future generations. As you all know, Lucas, my partner, was an introvert who was a terrible public speaker until the age of 22, when he got laughed at during a class presentation in NTU. Utterly embarrassed, he went to attend over $10,000 worth of courses to transform himself. Within three years, he transformed from a laughing stock in NTU to become the public speaking representative of NTU to compete with NIE in the yearly NTU versus NIE speech contest in 2006. And Lucas emerged champion. From eating lunch alone, he transformed into a magnetic personality where ladies and guys follow him to eat lunch together every day as his friends. He found the ways of switching off his logical and introverted brain to develop the interpersonal, linguistics and charismatic side of him. Even though to this day, he's still an introvert, during work, He's very serious, analytical, and results-oriented. He can switch any time to transform into an extrovert when he has to give presentations, do networking, or motivate stuff. Both Lucas and I achieved the success we have today because we focused at one point of our lives to develop the part of our brain that's responsible for speech charisma, and interpersonal skills. In the future, when humans are interacting more through Facebook, WhatsApp, and Skype, what will happen is that the brain will lose the social empathy functions, as shown through MRI scans. Meaning, people will become more introverted as smartphones and internet usage increase. That is why Speech Academy Asia is created to develop the linguistics, social, and interpersonal sections of the brains to gel together with the logical side. In 20 years' time, when your child goes into the world, 
speech and interpersonal skills will be in such high demand. And that is the only safest way for your child to become a leader, manager or entrepreneur. In our 10 year series of public speaking program, we have incorporated three technologies. This part will be heavy in content for some of you, so do bear with us. The first is Speech Linguistic Patterns, or called SLP for short. This is the content of our techniques. Impactful speeches have patterns in every speech fundamentals, and these patterns are incorporated into the speech fundamentals every month. We have listed over thousands of different patterns from the best speakers in history, such as Lee Kuan Yew, Margaret Thatcher, Martin Luther King Jr. Oprah Winfrey. I'll share more on the pattern that all powerful speeches must contain in a while. Besides content, how we deliver the content to your children is very important as well. This comes to our second technology called Language, Memory, Programming, Semantics. LMPS for short. Humans learn interpersonal skills and speech skills differently from logical skills such as math or science. Do you agree? Math and science is best learned introspectively, meaning the focus in internal and the environment is needed to facilitate thinking and processes. But speech and interpersonal skills is best developed differently. The first difference is that the focus is outwards for speaking. Meaning that the speaker is connecting and focusing on the external audience when speaking to truly be in the speaking zone. Second difference is the energy levels. Logical learning relies on calm energy in the mind. However, speech learning requires powerful energies in the body to fully involve the mind to be present. All our classes are conducted using LMPS to inject fun and energy into the classes so that your child's brain is absorbing the new speech techniques most effectively. Another reason why LMPS is so important is that it reverses the effects of fear with happiness and excitement. If a child is learning speech in a boring, adult-like lecture style with no laughter, what will happen is that the fear effects take over the state of the mind because it's unnatural to learn speech like that by nature. And the child will immediately associate fear with public speaking even more. Meaning that even though the child learns the techniques logically, they don't want to use it due to lack of passion when they grow up. LMPS ensures that the class environment is energizing for positive emotions to be raised. This way, your child will want to apply the speech techniques in real life as well as in their future. It is all in their willingness to speak up once they have the techniques. And that's why engaging classes always work better than just reading a book. The third technology we incorporated into our classes is called NS. Not National Service, but Neurosomatics. I'm sure some of you have experienced times when you were afraid, but no matter how much you try to convince your brain to not be scared, you are still afraid. It's as though the body doesn't want to cooperate with the brain. The key then to unleashing confidence and courage is to involve not just the mind, but also the physical body. One of the techniques we have incorporated is called Tension Release Exercise. And this is created by Dr. David Bacelli. He was a psychologist who followed Mother Teresa to war-torn countries to help traumatize people. He faced with difficulty because many of his students and patients 
were suffering from post-traumatic syndromes, or in short, PTSD. And this PTSD would scar them for life, and he couldn't help them with just counselling. Then one day, when a bomb exploded near his shelter, both adults and children crouched on the floor. But there was a difference in their after reactions. Some adults recovered as though there was nothing. Others were shivering, and most of the children started to shiver as well. He then took note of this and studied how each of these adults and children coped after that. He thought that those who shivered were the weaker minded ones who needed the most help. But what surprised him most was the complete opposite. Those that didn't shiver began to show signs of PTSD, while those that shivered recovered from the incident. He researched more and found out that animals in the wild also use the same mechanism to shake off their fears. They shiver. If an animal was allowed to shiver after surviving a life and death experience, they become trauma free. But if the process was stopped by human intervention, the animal remains scarred until one day they get into another life and death scenario and starts the process of shivering again. Through these studies, Dr. David found out how to release the stuck fear through his shivering classes exercises. Both Lucas and I have been studying not just Dr. David's shivering techniques, but also Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And we realize that many people think that fear exists in the mind. But in fact, it exists in the body as stored memory as well. That's why we incorporated Neurosomatics, NS, into the classes to teach your child how to build confidence both in the mind and in the body. I'll share with you one technique that we will be teaching your children later on. This June, we will be teaching the storyteller speech and the speech fundamental voice tonality. Now, some of you might be wondering, why learn to be a storyteller? Will it be useful for my child to tell stories? It serves two reasons. First, it is the ultimate social skill. Humans evolved by telling stories around a campfire to bond and create social networks. It is the very first forms of entertainment and we have evolved for hundreds of thousands of years to love listening to stories. That is why at a party, the best storyteller will always be surrounded by people and become the most popular person. The second reason is that stories are the ultimate tool to changing mindsets and influencing others. Children's stories like Cinderella, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, The Tortoise and the Hare were all created to teach children moral values in life. Motivational speakers tell their stories and motivated thousands. Martin Luther King Jr.'s stories about the men and women who sacrificed themselves for equality inspired millions to take action. In modern life, if a manager knows how to tell powerful stories, they basically have the most powerful tool to motivate and change the mindsets of their staff in very effective ways. So, what makes a story a good story? Firstly, have you all been mesmerized by a story before? It keeps you engaged imagining the visuals that the storyteller is talking about and you feel emotions of highs and lows. There are many techniques used by storytellers to bring the story to life in our brains. There are the nested loops, metaphorical association, rhymes, sensor stimulations, twists and many more that we have incorporated into SLP. 
Somehow, one fundamental will always exist in every exciting story. And that is the suspense curve. It looks a lot like the roller coaster track, going up and down. Normal storytellers will probably tell a story with one emotion up and one down. But professional storytellers know that the more times they make you go through the emotional ups and downs, the more the effects amplifies during the next up and down. And a good storyteller will always stop at a peak before the mood dwindles. In June, your child will learn how to deliver a story with the twin ups and downs, called the twin curves. It works by creating the first up and down that is small, and then amplifying the next wave to the maximum. Then they will learn how to stop the story when it reaches the maximum before it starts to drop to ingrain a moral into the audiences. How you can practice this with your kids is to bring out a storybook before bedtime and ask them to label the parts where the emotions are going downwards and where the emotions are going upwards and then ask them to read the story out. This will get them to reinforce more on the twin curve techniques before they sleep. And the learnings will continue to take place as they sleep to become even deeper. For adults, being able to tell stories of one's own accomplishment is a super way to sell yourself to increase value in the eyes of management or colleagues. Think of the times you face the challenge and how you overcame it at work by adding the twin curse techniques. Then, tell it to a colleague during lunch and see how their eyes sparkle at your motivational story and at the new rebranded you. The next technique is a speech fundamental called voice tonality. To amplify the emotional ups and downs, voice tonality adds a huge bonus to the effects in the curves. When the speaker is talking about the downs, the voice tonality goes down. When the curve goes up, the tonality goes upwards. Constant practice of voice tonality not only makes storytelling effects stronger, the voice also becomes engaging to audiences during everyday chatting. A varying voice tonality is also a criteria to score marks in school oral exams. MOE schools are now converting oral marks to be 30 or even 40% of languages total marks. So the voice tonality training will help them to score better in school. In fact, MOE's directions in the future is life skills based and interpersonal skill based. How we train children to be able to increase their voice tonality range is like singing practice. Students will read passages with ups and downs listed above the words. They will also learn which words are better to be high in tonality. Words associated with positive and high energy is high and words associated with low mood and energy is low in tonality. How you can help your child is to ask them to read a book to you with highs and lows. If you feel that the highs and lows are not distinct enough, meaning they read with the monotonous voice learned from mass class readings, such as, the moral of the story is... What you can do is to draw arrows in the book, ups and downs, to signify the different tones. Then let your child read the stories by emphasizing more on the highs and lows. It will sound something like this now. The moral of the story is... It may sound funny and unnatural at first, but it helps to condition the vocal cords to be used to the vocal ranges. It is like learning singing. The warm-up part is hardly any song. In fact, vocal warm-up sounds ridiculous. It is after the voice is conditioned and primed 
that voice becomes natural at tonality variety. One of the ways we train children for oral exams is to do the tonality stretches in the morning after breakfast on the way to school. By the time they reach school, their voices would have opened up or conditioned. During oral, somehow their voice would become more melodic. When the student hears their own voice and goes, Wow, I'm in the zone today, they will have additional confidence flooding into their bodies. So parents, on days when your children are going for their oral, either sing songs with them in the car before reaching school, or let them read a specialized script with arrows up and down found in the workbooks in our June workbooks. How tonality can help adults is also outstanding. To create energy, just raise your tone and volume when you talk. It is one of the techniques I teach in my sales training. A high tone voice signifies that I like the other party, while a low tone signifies my dominance. If you are a leader at work, it is important to lower your tone when you want others to follow. Here is a video clip from the documentary Eight Men on National Geographics where they conducted social experiments on the power of the leader's low-toned voice. Enjoy! In the ape world, the battle for space and dominance is not a quiet one. So if you want things to start going your way, you'll have to take another leaf out of the Alpha Rule book. Use your voice. With all their screaming, grunting and barking, you could be forgiven for thinking that all chimps sound the same. Noisy. But you'd be wrong. These are pant hoots. They are call signs and are distinctive to each individual. But in alpha males, it's all about making as much noise as possible. It says, look at me. Get out of my way. I'm in charge. High-ranking individuals are a bit louder. Tone is another really important factor. Low, deep sounds are associated with big body size. So if you're trying to threaten um, another individual, drop your voice. Human leaders will often try to lower the tone of their voice in order to sound more authoritative. So macho men have deeper voices. There's nothing to do with real big muscles. It sounds pretty obvious, but how much can the pitch of your voice actually affect other people's behaviour? To find out, we've sent our own cheeky chimp to stake out some personal territory in the middle of a busy train station. It's his box, and he's going to try and defend it from the human apes rushing for their trains. First, we've asked him to use a soft, high tone of voice. Get out of my box. 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 No one could be less interested in our chimp's demands. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. He's either ignored. Get out of my box. Or ridiculed. Get out of my box. There is no box. Next, we ask him to change the volume of his voice, but not the tone. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. It's louder, but Get still high pitched. Get out of my box. Will anyone get out of his box now? Get out of my box. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. No, still no luck. He can't stop anyone invading his territory. Get out of my box. Now he's going to adopt an alpha chimp's voice. Low in tone and loud in volume. But will anyone really take any notice? Get out of my box. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. Suddenly, everyone's going out of their way to avoid Get trespassing on the alpha chimp's territory. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. No one stops to think why. They're just instinctively doing what he says. Get out of my box. 
They'll even stop in their tracks to obey his unusual but masterful command. Get out of my box. 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 With his alpha voice, our chimp has become king of his jungle box. Get out of my box! We didn't know, actually, because some of them are almost stepping into the box and then uh, stop and then go round. Um, just without even consciously being aware of it, they're so influenced by the authority of his tone that they're obeying his command, just like in chimps. Get out of my box! Thanks. Now, how can we develop a lower tone as adults or women? Is it inborn or can it be trained? My voice used to be very high when I was young. It was when I was training as a singer that the technique somehow altered my voice. One practice used by Michael Jackson for his voice intonation training is this. What this does is that it trains your vocal cords to vibrate at a lower tone. Everybody follow me and do this with me. One more time. Wonderful. Now, turn to the person next to you and say with highs and low. Hi, my name is Bond. James Bond. You guys are great. You look wonderful doing this. I can tell that some of you are wiping your saliva. It's okay. Great things always happen after embarrassing moments. So are you all ready for the third technique? So few response. I am living. You guys are still around. Okay, I'll forgive you all this time. Now, the third technique for June is a confidence boosting technique from Neurosomatics, NS. Before I begin, let me talk about the chemistry of fear. How many of you don't like chemistry? Raise your hands. Wow, so many of you like chemistry. Great, I can continue speaking for the next one hour. What is fear? It is actually caused by a hormone released called cortisol when the brain's instinctive part called the amygdala is alerted. What this does is cause the entire body's chemistry and functions to temporarily alter itself. Blood flow more efficiently to the heart and cortical muscles. This is the flight syndrome where the body is primed to run away faster using the extra blood to the heart and thigh muscles. The only problem with this is that the lesser blood that goes to other parts of the body, the lesser fuel it gets. The body's energy fuel is called glycogen. It is an energy unit converted from glucose and is stored in the liver and other parts. When the hands get less glycogen, the muscles have lesser fuel and ended up shaking like this. It is also the same reason why we're at gym you do too many reps and your hands and arms will also shake. It's because you used up the glycogen. The other part that is affected is the brain. Lesser glycogen to the brain means it cannot think clearly, which is why speakers when scared will suddenly forget their script. Their IQ temporarily drops. Another part of the body that is affected is the stomach. Digestion is usually affected when a person is in fear. And chronic fear leads to chronic indigestion and constipation. Have you heard of the term butterflies in the stomach? It is caused by the lack of glycogen going into the stomach. June's technique will target the stomach. What your child will learn is a method of belly massage 
that promotes circulation in the stuck stomach. As the intestines are in the left valve arrangement, it is important to massage them in a clockwise manner, then squeezing eight times across for each clockwise rotation. The key to this is to press your hand in deep enough to squeeze the deep tissue while visualizing that confidence is being released from your stomach into your body. Yes, if you are feeling pain, you are on the right track. Now, everybody put your hands on your stomach. Hey, don't be lazy. I can sense you are not doing this. And now close your eyes and visualize confidence or energy being released. Put your hands on your stomach and rotate. Then squeeze left eight times and repeat. Now take a deep breath. How many of you feel more confident now? See, the alteration of physiology tricks the body that the threat is over and thus lowers the fear hormone. So we are actually using what nature intended for us to do, which is move our bodies when in fear. Through the belly squeeze, blood is encouraged to enter the stomach and glycogen is restored to the cells. This relaxes the rest of the body as well as cells communicate with each other. So, help your child overcome their fear whenever they are going for public speaking or exam anxiety by doing the belly squeeze 20 times per rep once every 10 minutes until they feel relaxed and confident again. In the exam hall before getting their papers, when other children are starting to hyperventilate and hunching forward to scrunch their stomach because of the discomfort, your child can use this to gain the upper edge. This technique is also easy to use for adults. Before going for a scary meeting or important event, you can go to the toilet and do this for a couple of minutes. It might even help you move your bowels to avoid constipation. In fact, this technique is nothing new. Our ancestors already discovered it 5,000 years ago. It is a documented massage listed in yoga called Nauli Kriya. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is called pressing the emperor acupoint. We improvised it with neuroscience to enhance it further. And so, I shall sum up what we will be teaching in June. We'll be touching on the storytelling skill, the twin curve, and we will be training on developing a wider range of tonality for your child's voice. And finally, your child will be practicing on the belly squeeze to learn how to release away pent-up fears whenever they are afraid. Now, I'll be talking about a few things that parents are still quite unsure of. The children's homework. Their homework is listed in their workbooks and it's up to the parents to monitor your child's homework. Some parents ask us if our homework will stress their children further. I always tell them to try the homework and see if their child is more stressed or lesser. The answer I get is that their children feel less stressed and more energized and relaxed after doing our homework. Now, how is this even possible? The reason is simple. Your child's left brain is constantly taxed when having tuition or doing academic work while their right brain is still resting. Constant usage of the left brain will cause it to tire and work less efficiently. And this leads to stress hormones produced in the body. Lack of use of the right brain on the other hand will cause it to degrade and it leads to lowering of interpersonal skills, creativity and emotional IQ. So the best way is nature's way which is to alternate the left and the right with balance. After school, give your child some right brain stimulating activities like giving speeches to strangers, reading their script with tonality, or looking at the mirror and speak to observe facial expressions. 
by letting the left brain rest, you are in fact making it more efficient and more relaxed. After your child has done their homework, just countersign at the page. At the end of the month, your child will be given speech quest points for each signature signed by you. They can exchange their speech quest points for prizes as well. Now, I shall touch on the new developments in June. We have just launched a video sharing program with parents. What is going to happen is that we need you to provide us with a Google email and we will share a Google Drive folder with you. We will upload videos inside for you after your child's presentation at the end of the month. Next, we have launched the grading system for your child. Every three months of attending the program, your child will get a certificate on their public speaking grades. It is from grade 1 to maximum 8, after which will be the level 3 coach certificates. The test will be based on your child's presentation at the end of the month. They will either get passed, passed with merit or distinction. To find out more on the grading test rules and regulations, you can ask our staff for a copy of the scoring rubrics. Next, we are launching the speech card games. This is an educational game invented by Lucas, where a child will be a corrected card where they can compete with other students in terms of speech. They can use skill cards to boost the body language, voice, emotions and words of their character to compete. This game uses the principle of LMPS, which is applied learning in a fun way to inculcate the importance of public speaking skills. Don't be surprised when you hear your child shouting, Oh yes, my body language is really powerful, I win! They will get a free card at the end of each lesson if they behave, and they can also exchange for extra cards using trophies. We are also hosting a speech card tournament at the end of the year where your child can win special prizes. Most importantly, the tournament's purpose is to expose your child to the fears and excitement of a tournament and how to overcome their fears before competing. Next development, the t-shirts for your children is out. This t-shirt is a complimentary gift. If you need extra, you can approach our staff to purchase more. Having a uniform is an important aspect of training. That is because uniforms have a powerful over the mind from the tactile anchors. That is why when ordinary citizens wear a police or soldier uniform, their minds are automatically changed. The t-shirt has the words speech champion on it to further reinforce their belief about themselves. So help your child by letting them wear the uniform, so that when they train in our class with the uniform, it facilitates a learning mood that is consistent. It doesn't help if only a few wears it. The classroom might actually look strange. So help our class develop that sense of identity and belonging by letting your child wear our uniforms. The next development I'm about to announce will help you make money. Yeah. As many of you know, enrichment centers have referral systems. Here, our referral gifts are as follows. If a friend you recommend signs up for three months, you get one lesson free in your next payment. If your friend signs up six months, you get two lessons off. If your friend signs up for 12 months, you get 4 lessons free. These gifts are only applicable for the first time your friend signs up. Last but not least, school holidays are coming and so are our award-winning speech champion holiday camps. The curriculum is outdoor based and very exciting. This camp's concept won Lucas the second runner-up in Media Corp's Young Entrepreneur Awards in 2012. If you are interested as a regular parent, 
you get additional 10% discount off if you sign up for the camps. To find out more, you can approach our staff for the course brochures. And now, I'll be sharing some great news about Speech Academy Asia with you. Last month, Lucas and I were invited by IDA, Infocom Development Authority, to train financial technologies entrepreneurs, short form, FinTech, to deliver powerful idea pitching presentations to get funding from investors. Several of our candidates were awarded millions of dollars of funding for their startup and they were so happy that their dreams were finally coming true. Next, I was invited to speak at a conference in KL, Malaysia. It was a government initiative for the F&B business owners. Many of the business owners even wanted us to set up a corporate branch in Malaysia to help train their staff. In June, Lucas will be invited to speak at the Young Entrepreneur Synopsis. It is a government initiative for JC and Poly students to learn the fundamentals of entrepreneurship. The reason they invited us is because they realized that many students wanted to start their own business in future, but they don't dare to open their mouths to get the funding they need. I am happy that these students have a chance to learn from us at this young age so that they have the time to prepare for their future dreams. In June, Speech Academy Asia is also hosting its first inter-school public speaking competition. It is a yearly competition between primary schools and what is so different about this competition is that traditional speech contests are between the elite speakers of each school and the schools only send one or two elites to compete. The rest of the student population have no chance to compete at all. And these are the students who need this exposure the most. We found the traditional logic sad. And hence, we opened up this competition to only allow shy kids to join. They will have a chance of a lifetime to face their fears on stage and break their limiting beliefs. The finals will be held at Suntec City Convention Hall from 5th to 7th June at the Kids Academy Exhibition. We have a booth there too. So bring your children to watch others present and also get prizes from our booth. The next good news come from Trainer Joan. We outsourced her to Victoria Junior College as their public speaking coach this year in January. Before she joined, VJC public speaking team had never won a single public speaking trophy for the past five years. The teachers had basically given up on the public speaking club's potential. Instead of attracting good speakers like other JCs, the VJC speech club was a congregation of the most shy kids in the school who were bad at speaking and wanted an avenue to practice. It had a bad reputation in the school as a lousy nerd club that was uncool. The next thing that happened was beyond the wildest imagination. Last month, at the Dunman High Speech Contest, Victoria team backed the second and fourth place, as well as the MVP award out of 21 JCs that participated. Victoria team also obtained three out of five trophies given out that day. Then the team sent two other speakers to the Japanese Junior College speech contest a few weeks later. And again, all the two speakers achieved top five places. In just four months of coaching, VJC had risen from the bottom school to be the second placed JC in Singapore just before Raffles Institution. What is amazing is that shy and bad speakers can transform themselves using our three technologies to go head to head with the elite speakers. Miracles don't happen by chance. It happens by learning the correct strategies. In a while, parents, you'll be sitting in your children's month-end presentation. Different children have different learning speeds. Your child's speech 
may or may not be at a professional level yet. But your child has put in lots of effort and mustered plenty of courage to present to all. The changes are taking place internally, but a seed takes time to grow. And I sincerely hope that you can assist the seed to grow by encouraging your child. No matter how they presented, tell them that they did a good job. This way, they will be validated for their efforts and they will want to do better in the future. If you criticize them now, telling them that they are not good enough, you might end up killing the seed that is growing within them. How many of you here love to read books and study in your free time? Please raise your hands. How many of you finished reading a book within the last three months? Our own methods of education system kill the passion to learn and it ends up deeply rooted inside us. Because when we were young, we probably raised our hands to answer a question but end up getting shot down by the teacher when we got it wrong. It is important to point out the mistake, but it is also very important to appreciate the child that wants to answer questions, who is passionate to learn, to grow the seed of learning. How much they will develop the passion for speaking is determined by not just our classes alone, but also by you. So I sincerely suggest that you appreciate your child after their presentation. Give your child verbal affirmations like, thank you for giving the speech. I like the way you used your voice or your hand gestures. If you would like to feedback to our teacher that your child is not up to standards, do it when your child is not around. Hearing about their own parents complaining about their lack of capabilities to their teacher is a sure way to kill the passion to learn. We have a feedback form box. Do write us the feedback or give us a call when your child is not around to speak with our trainers instead. We appreciate feedback and it's important that you let us know so that we can continue to improve and help your child more. With this, I shall end the workshop today. I wish all of you a wonderful month ahead. Thank you and may the best speeches be with you.